And my next guest knows all too well the devastation unleashed by Hurricane Katrina. The actor Wendell Pierce lost his childhood home to that disaster back in 2005. He's been a vocal advocate of rebuilding efforts ever since, especially for the mostly black neighborhoods that we've just been discussing in New Orleans. Now, in his professional role, the actor is taking on a timeless American classic. He's starring as Willie Loman in a Broadway revival of Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman, head of the first ever black Loman family on stage. He spoke to our Walter Isaacson about the personal and political meaning of the play's key theme, which is the American dream. Thank you, Christian and Wendell Pierce. Welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. It's great to be here, Walter. And congratulations. I mean, but you, Sharon D. Clark, playing uh, Linda, you're playing Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman. It's gotten great previews. It's on Broadway. I'm sitting here within an easy walk at the WIS studios to Pontchartrain Park, the storied neighborhood where you grew up. And I, it reminded me the play is about that aspiration that came from places like Pontchartrain Park. Tell me about growing up there. Puncher Train Park uh, is was this great bucolic neighborhood uh, that is really a part of everybody's dream of um, what it would be like to be in a small town, but actually in a in a city. Uh, and it was the result of the civil rights advocacy of uh, uh, A. P. Turo, who was a great civil rights leader in New Orleans. And uh, out of something ugly, we built something great. It, came about uh, as access to green space, even during the segregated times in New Orleans, uh, black folks weren't allowed to go to. And uh, with this advocacy to have access to green space, the, the compromise was the ugly, separate, but equal. Adjacent to a white neighborhood, we'll set aside these 200 acres for this black community. Uh, and out of that ugly idea of separate, but equal, we made it an incubator of black talents. Uh, because it was lawyers and doctors and my my parents, teachers and maintenance men and postal workers and uh, domestics all coming together to show that uh, they can share in this American dream of home ownership and uh, building uh, a life for their families. And um, that's what Punch Train Park became. Well, you talk about it being part of the American dream, and that's what this play, Death of a Salesman, is about. And when Arthur Miller wrote this, his father had been successful but gone bankrupt in the Great Depression. Your dad came back uh, from the war around the time this play debuted in 1949, and he had that struggle for the American dream as well. Tell me about your father. Do you see him in Willie Loman? I, I think of my father uh, constantly and incessantly when it comes to this play because a part of the American dream is the fight with the American nightmare which is uh, the paradox of what Willie is, how he loves this dream, he's paradoxical in his behavior. He loves his family, but does things to be self-destructive to himself and his family. And that's what the American dream is about. We're constantly fighting this paradox. The American paradox is what I consider it. Uh, we believe in equality and justice for all, and then we do things that belie that, that go against the whole ideology of that. When you talk about that, all of those themes, the headwinds that come when you're pursuing the American dream, are amplified if you're black. And this is the first time you got five black characters in this play. Absolutely. This is, uh, and so I think of my father in Punch of Trade Park, how they didn't have access to purchase a home in New Orleans. You could not even walk into the park if you were black, except for one day of the week, Wednesday, Negro Day. You could not even access. Uh, 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 the money that would be needed to, to get a loan, to get a home loan, uh, a home loan. He couldn't even walk into the French Quarter, our beloved French Quarter, when he came back from the, from World War II. There was the Double V campaign that all Black folks understood in the 1940s. Victory abroad against fascism and victory at home against fascism and, uh, and segregation. And they won the battle abroad and came back home and still we're decades away from winning any of the battles uh, uh, home in New Orleans. So that connection of that disillusionment of what the American dream is and can be that Willie Loman is on 
is the same disillusionment that my father had, that actually he gave to us. You know, you can't get lost in America, is it? Something my father would always say. And it was a it was a literal thing because we were traveling on some summer vac vacation. But he would say it euphemistically too, that in America, you can find your way. But with that, he steeled us with the knowledge that there were those who will not have our best interests at heart. There are racist, violent, segregations that you will have to battle and contend with to achieve this American dream. In the meantime, you will have to fight through an American nightmare. The mistake that Willie makes, that Willie Loman makes, that my father didn't, is understanding that simultaneously embrace the wealth that you already have, the wealth of family and love. Today is all cut and dry. There's no chance of bringing friendship to bear. All personality, you see what I mean? They don't know me anymore. That's There's, just the thing. If man. I have $40, that's all I need, Howard, Kid, $40. I can't take blood from a stone. Oh, in the year Al Smith was nominated, your father came to I've me. I've got to see said, some people, I'm Kid. talking about your father! There were promises made across his chest. You mustn't tell me you have people to see. I put 34 years into this firm, Howard, and now I can't pay my insurance. You can't eat the orange and throw the peel away. A man is not a piece of fruit. And that's why this is a love play. And the hubris, that tragic flaw that Willie Loman has, is while he had blinders on, searching for that material wealth, he lost sight of the wealth of love that he had around him in his family that would have helped him contend with all the obstacles placed in front of him, especially for a black man in 1949 America. You talk about the obstacles placed in front of Willie Loman. If I walk out of this studio to Pontchartrain Park, I go through City Park, and I remember the little signs when I was growing up where water fountains would say, white only. There were different aggressions that a black would have to face. In this play, Death of a Salesman, there are lines like that that I think would have more resonance played by a black player like yourself. Lines where they say, oh, Mr. Lohman, wouldn't you feel more comfortable sitting in the back or something? How is it like in the play to have those lines? It is. Um, it, it just shows you that our interpretation, our, our, our depiction of the black Loman family, just heightens all of those uh, insults and aggressions. Like, like as you said, when the, the boys go into the restaurant, they're segregated, put in the back. I actually have the infidelity with a white woman, and everyone always questions the line that I have. I say, go in the bathroom here when there's a knock on the door. There may be a law. I think there's a law in Massachusetts about it, about us being together. And everyone assumes that we put that in. I said, no, that was a play. That was part of the play. It is heightened because you realize the misogynation laws of uh, interracial marriage and interracial coupling, uh, what it was like in 1949. So those are heightened. And then the, the one that I always point out is People always say, did you change anything? I said, if we changed anything, it was a reduction of one word. When Lee J. Cobb played the role, someone insulted him by calling him a walrus. When Dustin Hoffman played the role, someone insulted him by calling him a shrimp. When I played the role, someone insults me by calling me, and I don't have to say it. The audience hears the racial epithet. Oh in the silence and um, and so that just shows you the power of the interpretation of having an african-american family and there's i expect pushback and there has been some but arthur miller answered that himself in 1972 when asked about the first time there was a betrayal of uh, a black willie loman he says especially with this play it's been so successful in cultures around the world and countries around the world. I totally expect a black actor to demonstrate his humanity and our shared humanity and his artistry in playing this role. So for all of those who are accustomed to a certain way of interpretations being uh, of the play, uh, I would say, why don't we take the word of the author himself to embrace the interpretation that we're putting on today. One of the things about Arthur Miller's play that Willie Loman lacks, it's tragic, is that he faces all these headwinds, 
not only does he not have the love that comes from thinking the family and all is more important, but there's actually no art, no culture to help uh, sort of mitigate the wounds he's feeling. You played in Treme, by far my favorite TV series ever. You played Antoine Baptiste. And it's the same sort of headwinds, but it's connected to culture and art. How do you compare those two roles you played? You, you know, that's a very good question, Walter. You being a New Orleanian, you understand uh, the role of culture in our lives in New Orleans, especially, and that it, it's emblematic of uh, the role of culture uh, in the world, in, in the humanity. Uh, what thoughts are to the individual, but we reflect on who we are, decide what our values are, our triumphs, our failures. When we reflect on ourselves, that's what the forum of art does for us as a community, a place where we reflect on who we are, where we've been, where we hope to go, decide what our values are, and then go out and act on them. That is a mantra of mine. Those who have read interviews and seen me, I say that all the time. And it's very interesting that you said that Willie Loman doesn't have a connection to that culture, to culture itself. Well, art may have been the place where he can, would have found some solace, found some understanding of uh, the ineptitudes that he was uh, going through and, the, and the, the obstacles that were placed in front of him, giving him some sort of uh, steeled tools to work through them or work around them. That's the solace that this play offers us. That's what Arthur Miller did. Right, right. And, and actually, that's the play as a piece of art offers that as a cautionary tale to those who view it, uh, you know, and hopefully offers Willie as never by the grace of God, God, go I, do not make this mistake. But with Antoine Baptiste, who had nothing, had lost everything in Katrina, who had lost his way, he's not the most, uh, he's, he's a ne'er-do-well, not the most focused and um, driven man. It was his art that sustained him. And there was something that we tried to do in Treme about New Orleans. It was the art that brought us back. First of all, reminded us what our journey was about and why our city was so special. And I dare say that we came back and rebuilt our city with that reminder of that clarion call in our culture, that intersection of life itself and how we deal with it, that intersection was created in our cuisine and our architecture and especially our music. I got my favorite line from this play. Now, maybe you can say it and reflect on it, but it's a part about I've got, I've got to get some seeds. I've got to get some seeds right away. Right. Nothing planted. I don't have a thing in the ground. Right. That is, that is it. I've got to get some seeds. I've got to get some seeds right away. Nothing planted, not a thing in the ground. I have... I'm leaving nothing. I, seeds are hope. Seeds are visceral and real and life itself. And while I don't have anything material, I haven't left anything that visceral to my family and to my sons, specifically to Biff. And that line is so reflective of the, um, of the hope that he has. But then the tragic interpretation of that, where he actually goes and he gets the seeds and he's planting them. And it's in that moment of giving hope to the future that he, he makes, I believe, his ultimate tragic mistake. Uh, we know the end of the play by the title, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's iconic enough that I don't think I'm ruining it for your listeners. But when he makes that choice to take his life, the hurt and pain and destructiveness that it causes cannot compare. They overwhelm his idea that that act is also a legacy, that he's giving something to his son by having this life insurance policy that's not going to pay off. He, the disillusionment of that, if he had only known that the true seed, 
that he could have left is what Biff asked him to do ultimately at the end of the play. Just let me be me and I will find my way. You have given me enough. Let me be me. Let go of that phony dream. Um, and that's the, that's, that's the nexus of the pain and the, and the catharsis that we all feel in the play. If he had only done this one thing, or if he had only not done this one thing, it would have all worked out. Let me ask you one personal question. You're about the most successful person I know who's come out of our neighborhood. You've done, I don't know, 30 movies, 50 TV shows. But do you still sometimes feel that pain that Willie Loman felt? Oh, yeah. I, uh, if I'm to be honest, as successful as I have been, I always see myself as a journeyman. And uh, maybe I haven't met, left a mark and left a legacy. Um, that I have nothing planted, that I haven't created enough of a body of work that is of some significance. And uh, a man can't go out the way he came in. He's got to add up to something. And that's I share that. a great line in the play. And, and that's something I share with Willie. I think about this play has forced me to think of my own mortality. And uh, the actor Jennifer Lewis says, that I have 20 summers left. And I think about uh, what I've done, what I hope to do. And uh, this moment has given me an opportunity to uh, mark my passing and leave some legacy, a great piece of art in this great play, in a great role that I get to share with a small fraternity of men who have done it on Broadway. And more importantly, opening night, my father, 97 years old, will be sitting in the audience watching his legacy on stage, center stage on Broadway in this iconic American play. That is a divine gift. And for that, I'm hum humbly grateful. Thank you, Wendell. Attention must be paid. Attention must be paid. Attention must finally 